Hello and in today's 80 Mega 328P programming tutorial I am going to be covering the serial UART. Now let's have a look at the schematic. The schematic is basically the same as the previous one. The only thing that changes is we added a FTDI USB to serial converter and then the TX of FTDI is connected to the RX pin of the 80 Mega 328P and then the RX line is connected to the TX of the 80 Mega 328P and then we have a joint ground. Now let's have a look at the data sheet. Now in section 19 we have UART 0 and this is the only UART on the 80 Mega 328P. Now the 0 at the end indicates which UART you are working with. So all registers will be prefixed with a 0 where an X is applied. So all registers will be register name A0 blah 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 and then register B0 blah blah blah. If you have more than one UART then it is going to be UART 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 that you might be working with. Now the UART in the 80 Mega 328P has full duplex implementation. So we have an independent serial receive and serial transmit. Now this means is you can just enable them separately. So you can either receive and send or you can do either just receive or just send. And then we have two operation modes, asynchronous and synchronous. Asynchronous is the most common and that's what we are going to set up for. Then the master and slave clocked synchronous operation. We are going to ignore that since we are doing asynchronous. It has a high resolution board rate generator. I believe it is a 12 bit board rate generator. It has support for a number of frame sizes 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. The most common one is 8. I have actually never seen one of the other configurations. And then we have one or two stop bits. We are going to configure for one stop bit. You can get both of these either or, but the most common one is one stop bit. We have odd or even parity generator and parity check support by hardware. We are not going to use parity with our configuration so we're going to have this disabled. And then we have these errors. We have noise filtering which is nice features. We have three separate interrupts for TX complete and RX complete. We are only going to be using TX complete and RX complete interrupts. And then we have double speed mode which basically just halves the pre scale of the board generator in half. Then we just have an overview of what the driver is. This is not that important. And then we have a block diagram of how the UART actually works internally on the chip. This is nice if you're doing debugging or anything like that. Then we have clock generation. It doesn't have anything of real significance for us. Then we have a block diagram of how the clock is generated. Then we have the internal clock generator, board rate generator. The internal clock generator is used for asynchronous and synchronous master modes of operation. So here's the important bit. The US board rate generator register is UBRRN. So it will be UBRR0 because we are using UART0 for this. And then we go down and then we have table 19.1 which is our board rate register settings. And here they give us the formula for the two asynchronous modes. So normal asynchronous node and double speed asynchronous mode. And here is the formula for UBRRN. And then they state under here the UBRRNH and UBRRNL registers are used for the board rate generator. So UBRR0H will be your high register and UBRR0L will be your high register. So it's two different 8-bit registers that are used in this. And then as you can see here the board rate gets multiplied by 8 in double speed mode and then in normal mode it is multiplied by 16. And this is a fairly simple formula which we can implement in software and then they just say that the U2X bit is used to enable or disable double speed mode and then we have the frame formats so the frame format we are going to use is one start bit eight data bits in total and we are going to have no parity with one stop bit parity is just for error checking throwing an error is going to be very unlikely and then they just have a diagram of how the frame formats going to be and then we have the UART initial 
initialization the UART has to be initialized before any communication can take place so by default the UART is disabled on the ATmega 328P the initialization process normally consists of setting the board rate setting frame formats and enabling the transmitter or receiver depending on usage and then we are also going to be enabling the interrupts on it for receive and send and then you have your reinitialization it's very rare use case to have reinitialization and then they have sending a frame with 5 to 8 bits we'll be covering that later and then they have for a 9 bit frame a 9 bit frame has a special bit associated with it which is txb 8 bit and that just contains the 9th bit you send so just something of note with 9 bit you have to set the tx8 bit and then write the rest of your 8 bits to the transmit buffer to send the 8 bits over and you're going to have to do the same with the receive on it except in the receives case you first need to read the bit and then we have the transmit interrupt flags basically what they say is you need to enable the interrupt and to clear uh, the flag doesn't need to be cleared it's automatically cleared in hardware once the interrupt has processed and then they just go through the receive we have 8-bit data transmission and then they're just going to handle errors here which I'm not going to handle but in general if you have an error you read your receive buffer and then it clears the bit for said error and then they have also flushing the receive buffer very simple to flush the receive buffer you just read the receive buffer and then discard the data that you have read and then they have a bunch of error handling more error handling now we're going to skip ahead to the registers okay so we have two registers here rxb and txb now txb and they both point to the same register location in the sfr so this udrn register in this case it will be udrn0 here they say the uart transmit buffer and the uart receive buffer registers share the same io address referred to as uart data register or like i said previously udrn and it's going to be udrn0 in this case okay then they say the transmit buffer register txb will be the destination of data written to the udrn0 register location so if you want to send data you write to udrn and then if you want to read data you read the udrn0 register and that will give you your received data and that will be the rxb register and here they just state they are using a type of fifo for it and then they just give you a warning be careful using the bit test instructions SBIC and SBIS since these two will change the state of the FIFO okay then our next register is going to be UCSRA so the UART control and status register A and this just mostly contains status bits so we have in bit 7 the UART receive complete if this bit is 1 we have a receive if it's 0 we have received nothing and then we have our transmit complete if this bit is 0 our our transfer is complete if it is one our transfer is not complete and something we need to note here is the default state of the register so by default it is going to be zero for receive and transmit and then we have our data register empty so if this bit is one our data register is empty and if it is zero it still has data in it and then we have our error state bits for frame error data overrun and then our parity error as well on the next page now for all intents and purposes you have to write these as zero when you're writing to this register and then we have the wart speed control bit this is just to select the divider of the board rate so it will either be 16 or 8 depending on what this bit is set if it is set to zero then the divider is 16 if the bit is set to one the divider is set to eight and then we get to the uart control and status register B. Now this is the register that we're primarily going to be focusing on. So in bit 7 we have the RX complete interrupt enable. So when we write a 1 to here we enable the RX interrupt and then we have in bit 6 the TX complete interrupt enable. So we're going to write this 1 to enable the TX interrupt. We are not going to use bit 5 which just indicates if the register is empty which we actually do not care. We just care about when our TX is complete or not complete. Then we have our receive enable bit n so when you write a 1 to this bit it's going to be enable the receiver on the UART. You see writing a 1 enables the 
port receiver. Uh, here is the interesting bit. The receiver will override normal port operation on RX DN pin. So you don't need to configure the your pins for input output. It will automatically do that for you. And then we have our transmit enable bit. So if you write a one, you enable the transmit here. And this will also override the normal port operation on the TXN pin when enabled. So it will automatically go as an output on your ATmega328B. So we don't need to worry about setting up the pins on this. And then we have a bit that is used to determine the character size. If you're using 8-bit to 5-bit, this is going to be used in another register with two other bits to determine what our character size is going to be. And then we have the RX8 and the TX8 bit. This is now only if you're using a 9-bit data frame. The two bits will be contained in these two bits for your RX and your TX. Then we have our your control and status register. This basically controls your frame setup for the UART and the mode the UART is going to be in. Now the default state here is actually very important because by default it is set up like we want it to be in with an 8-bit transmission, parity, asynchronous mode and one stop bit. So as you can see here these two bits we are going to be set in asynchronous mode and that is by default 0 over here and then we just go down again to the next set of bits which is the parity mode bits and you can see it is default here as 0 and then also 0 over here by default. Then we go to our stop bit select bit which is now bit 3 and one bit is 0 so again by default 0. And then we have our character size which we want as 8 bits and then you can see UCSZ 01 and 00 is 1 1 so the two lower ones is 1 and then in the previous register in register B we can see the 2 is 0 so by default we have 8 characters and then we have our clock polarity select which is going to be rising and then falling edge and by default 0 so we actually don't need to touch this register when we are setting up the UART and then we have our board rate generator value which is UBRRN H and UBRRN low so these two registers combine to make one value that the board rate generator uses to determine how fast to send the bits and you can see here the top two bits are not used so we actually only have 12 bits in total to work with and then we get example board rate settings which is basically a cheat sheet but I'm going to make it dynamic so that we can use any board rate we wish to since I'm using a 16 megahertz clock we are going to go to the table that contains uh, 16 megahertz which is the very last one and we can say I'm going to set up for 9600 boards so my board rate generator value has to be 103 but here's the thing we can have errors but they are very unlikely with a 0.2 percent chance of getting an error this just means the speed doesn't perfectly align and 9600 is one of the more standard board rates okay now let's get to the coding now we have a base file here now the first thing I want to do is I want to create two more files so we're going to say add new item include file I'm going to name it uart underscore hull dot h and then I'm going to create another file and that's going to be a c file and we are going to call it uart hull.c we just save that and then in uart hull.c you are going to hash include uart hull and then in uart hull we are going to copy our includes from main to uart hull.h and then in our main we hash include uart hull and we're going to flick back to uart hull.c and we're going to create a function which is void and we say uart underscore init and we're going to pass into uart init a uint32 underscore t and we are going to say that's the board rate and then a uint8 underscore t and we are going to call that high speed the first local variable is going to be uint8 underscore t and we're going to call that speed and we say it's equals to 16 by default and then we could say if brace high uh, speed is not equals to 0 then speed is going to be equals to 8 and we take the your control register a and we make that a 0 
and we put that or equals to one shifted by then we go to our dependencies if your dependencies doesn't show just click the build button and then it should show up and then we go to iom328p and then we just quickly find the register and then we get u2x0 and we shift it by that amount so basically we're enabling high speed and we jump back to our formula then we say our board is equals to the formula so we say f underscore cpu is divided by brace speed so that will be 16 in our case but if we enable high speed mode it will be 8 times the current value of board and then we encase the whole thing in a brace and we say minus 1 and that will give us the board rate now the reason I picked a UN32 is is if you pick UN16 the value turncates and you get the wrong value so basically it goes past the maximum value of a UN16 and then goes back to 0 and then you get completely the wrong value if you say UN32 then you get the correct value out after doing all the divisions and multiplication here and then we need to set the two registers that we use for the board rate so it's going to be uh, the UBRRH register which I'm copying off the data sheet and we just set that to zero and that is also the next one is going to be the L register the H register is going to be equals to the board and a 0x 0f 0, 00 since we only have the lower four bits available and we are going to shift that by eight so what i'm doing is i'm masking the four bits in the position of the board rate and then i'm just shifting them down so that they can fit into a 8-bit value so basically i'm splitting the two values and then the next one is going to be board and 0x00ff and that filters out the lower four bits and then we just set the lower board rate generator equals to the lower four bits then we take the b register we copy that one over we set n to zero and then what we want to do is we say equals one left shifted and now we are going to enable the interrupt so we go back to our io map we take our tx enable zero bit and we set that to one we actually need to set this to or equals and then we or again again one left shifted by uh rx enable and then we want to enable our two interrupts so i'm just going to make two ors pre and then i'm just going to copy again because it is getting repetitive and then we go to our io.h again and then we are going to take our rx enable bit set that to one and then our tx interrupt enable bit and we are going to set that to one and since the c register is already set like we want it we are not going to change anything over there now the next thing we want to do is add our interrupts so we take our isr macro from the avr interrupts register and we create two of them and then we go to our io map again we go down and then we look for our tx interrupt so we want rx vect which is vector 18 and we just stick that one in there and then we want our transmitter vector and we stick that in there so now we have both our interrupts ready now what we're going to do in our interrupts is our uh, your send is going to get a global variable of volatile and that's going to be static and a uint8 and we are going to call it uart tx and then we say busy and that's going to be equals to one so by default one is not busy zero is busy then in our transmit interrupt we are just going to say busy is equals to one then we are going to set up our transmitter which is void and we're going to say uart send byte and it's going to take a parameter of uint8 and we're just going to call that c before we send any data we are going to check while uart 
must call dx busy is equivalent to zero then wait here until it flips back to a one so basically we're just saying uh, wait until any previous data has been sent here and then we say uart tx busy is equals to zero so we're telling now hey i'm busy i'm going to send it now we say udr zero is equals to c so now we load whatever data we passed into the function to udr zero we are going to rename that function you Art. Then we are going to create a second function. This is just going to be a quality of life function. Void uart and send underscore array. So any array of bytes, we are going to give it a parameter of uint 8 underscore t. And we are going to pass in a pointer to a string. And we are going to say, and then the second parameter will be uint 16 underscore t. And that's going to be len, so the length of our data. And we are just going to create a for loop clear a uint 16 in it we're going to call it i equals 0 comma i less than len comma i plus plus and then what we do is we call uart send byte in it we take our c pointer and its members and i and then we transmit the data like that so now we can send any binary data over now we have a third function which is going to be void uart send trim and that is going to take a parameter of uint 8 pointer and we are just going to clear an internal variable here of uint 16 i equals 0 and we are going to do a do and it's going to be a while c i not equals line terminator character and then in the final one we are just going to send the byte over again so this just sends over the termination character as well. We say our uart byte c in the do while. We output that. And then we just say i++. So this is just a method to send a string over. So what we're doing is we are going, we pass in a string here. We have our i variable, which is just a holder for a counter. And then we send what's ever in the zero character. We increment. We check, hey, is this the end of the string? And then we go back, 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 back. And then as soon as we find the uh, end of the string, we exit and we send the zero termination character as well okay and that's it for transmitting we just save it and build it and check for errors okay we have no errors here and now we can actually test the data now we need to copy our functions to our .h file so we just quickly add in every function definition i am going to make the uart send byte public Okay, now we are going to call init in the main. We are going to give it 9600 board and we are not going to give it high speed. If you're wondering why I'm not using a bool, a bool is not natively supported. And then in the while one loop, we take our reward sent byte and we are just going to send over a characters every ms. Uh, let's say every half a second, we are going to send a a over the UART. We just build that. After trying to debug for way too long, I forgot to enable the global interrupt. So it is SEI, and we just call that function to enable the interrupts because my UART was getting stuck in the in an infinite loop every time it sent the first character. But I'm going to change this as well now to a uint 8, say data, and we say equals to A capital A and we are going to transfer data over and then we're just going to say if data is greater than capital Z uh, data is equals to A we actually increment data by one now actually what this will do is it will print the data as A B C D E F G all the way through the alphabet and there we have it working as you can see at the top of the screen that the UART is actually printing out right now. We can see the transmitter led, uh, the receiver led of the FTDI flashing over here. And unfortunately not much else, but you can also see on the console that the um, letters are are getting printed out. Now let's get back to the code. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a ring buffer receive on the UART. We go in our .h 
and we just quickly create a hash define so we say hash define rx underscore buffer size and I'm just going to make this a 128 byte buffer we just copy this name we go to our C file paste the buffer size in then we create two variables both volatile the one is going to be the rx buffer and that is going to be of size rx buffer and it's going to be also a static uint8 and it's going to be initialized as all zeros and then we create another volatile static variable and that's going to be of size uint16 and we just say rx uh, count and that's going to be initialized as zero just for clarity's sake volatile means do not optimize my variable don't throw it away please just keep it as and static means keep it local only this file can use this global variable and then we say and that's going to be our rx buffer and then the same with our rx count now in our receive interrupt we're going Going to say every time a character is ready to receive we say our rx buffer is equals to the udr zero register so if we read this register we get whatever in the ur buffer and then after that we are going to our rx count and increment that and that's our baseline now inside this interrupt service routine we are going to copy our volatile static u in 16 and we are going to say rx write pos equals zero then we say write to the current position of rx write pos and then we increment rx write pos and then we say if rx write pos is greater or equals to the rx buffer size then we just reset write pos to zero now basically what this will do is every time we receive something we increment a counter and we then increment another counter but this another counter will determine where in the rx buffer we are writing the data to and then if we have the rx write pos greater than our buffer size then just reset the buffer now a circular buffer has the disadvantage of that you have the ability to overwrite your buffer data if you don't read it fast enough but it's nice if you want the only the most up-to-date data and that is what i am currently only caring about is the most up-to-date data so this just pushes in our data to a queue and rx count will tell us if there's data in the queue and write pos will determine where we are writing the queue and then this variable which is volatile static so volatile says please don't optimize this and statics makes it local to this function so this is effectively the same as declaring it say global but only this function can access rx write pos so it will retain its value every time it comes in here so it will initially be zero and then if it goes through the rx write pos plus one then it will retain the plus one when you re-enter this function okay now we need to actually read the data out so we are going to create two functions which is going to be uint 16 uart underscore read or count and that's going to pass in void parameters and all this does is return the rx count this will simply just tell us if there's data in the rx buffer then we create another function void ur underscore read and we say braces and we say also void we actually have to change this to uint8 underscore t and it will be our turn data and then what we do is we create another static variable you in 16 we say rx read pos and equals zero and then we say you in eight underscore t and we say data and that is equals to zero and then we say data is equals to rx buffer and we say that's equals to our read position so we are pulling the data now out of the buffer and then we increment our read buffer by one so we move to the next in the buffer and then we say rx underscore count is decremented by one so this will pull the data out of the buffer and then we say rx read pos is greater or equals to rx data buffer size then the read pos is equals to zero and at the very end we return our data and it will read from the ur so we take these two functions we take it to our h
Now we go to main, we remove the delay and now what I'm going to do is I am going to create a UART echo. So we go if and we go to UART.h, we say our read count. So this will tell us how many bytes there is in the buffer. So we say greater than zero. We take our UART send data, we stick that in there and then we say data is equals to, we go back to UART.h, we say UART read and we void that. And actually I'm going to add something else now as well to the main. I'm going to add a const uint8 underscore t. We're just going to call the start. We give it no size parameters. Program start backslash n backslash r and we just quickly capitalize those two letters. I need a comma point. Then after our interrupts are enabled, we go to uart.h, uh, we say uart send string, we copy that, paste that in and we say comma point. We save that, we build that, got that as well, we try to build again and now the build succeeds. We just quickly program it. Now in putty you can see the program has started, which I've just highlighted now. Okay, now for some reason my receiver led is not very happy, but that's besides the point. Now if I type in putty, you can see it not doing what it's supposed to be doing. If I can stop making errors, that would be great. Um, we have to call it as a function. I don't know why it allowed me to do that. We try programming again. Okay, then we reset the chip. We have program start. We have a happy receiver led. And now whatever I type echoes back. But you know what? This is boring. Let's add some lights to this. Okay, now we are going to add some lights to this. We take our DDRD register where the LEDs are hooked up. We set the upper set of bits as output. We declare a counter variable. And then we are going to take that counter variable. I'm just copying pasting from the interrupt tutorial. And then we say our port D is equals to counter every time it comes around. And then we just quickly build again. We say memories and we program. This is my camera's battery is running low. We can see program start up there and every time I hit the button we have a bunch of LEDs going over there. And that's a somewhat overcomplicated introduction to Serial UART on a 80 mega 328p. A like, share, comment and subscribe will always be appreciated. The code will be on Git. There's also some social links if you want to follow me there. Have a nice day.